the first year it was like 40 grand. It was like a couple months with just me. And then last year it was two guys and we did about 260,000. 260,000 last year and then this year, year three, you're over six, how much, 600 and what? We'll probably about 625, said and done. 625. You're, you've taken an active role to step away from actually being on the job site. The jobs. I was probably on the site maybe 25, 30% this summer. That's, that's a, I think that's absolutely critical. You have to, if you want to grow and expand, because I, I love doing this, I would run machines all day long, that's what I love doing, but like my, like last year, that's what I was, and I realized I'm never gonna get past this, me and two other guys, I was in a machine all day, we're never gonna get past that. So like I didn't even start paying myself until at anything until like this spring, which was like what two years into it. So what what has helped you guys like get through those growing pains and get through the struggles? Uh, and, it's that, been listen, really me going full time this year. That, it's been that, that was a huge, huge part because you know so many guys they try to work in the field all day and then go home and work till midnight on paperwork. You can only do that so long and you're burnt out and you're tired out. You can't trying to get trying to get to know every excavator, landscaper, mowing guy in the area. So you're so. you're a living example of cooperation, not competition. Mm -hmm. Yep, I've, I don't I don't compete against anyone. Like when I go to bid a project, I just bid it for whatever I need, and it is what it is, and we been get, get, getting work just left and right. Yeah, I asked, so I, one of your videos you said you made eight grand in a day, and I was like, I want to do that so bad, I want to make eight grand in a day. Well, now this year we've done it, I can't even count how many times. So then I asked, uh, the, what's, the most, what's the most you have ever made in a day? And you said like 22,500. That was so, exactly the amount. So that's that's my next goal, and now our next goal is 22,500 in one day. So now we have somewhere to go. We're not just wandering around doing whatever, we're setting goals and we're going there, and then boom, boom. boom. About it. All right, guys, we got a very unique story today because we are going to be talking with Marlena and Garrett. Garrett, how old are you? 19. Marlena? 22. These guys started this business how long ago? Uh, two and a half years ago, so you, July of 2017. So are you still in high school? Nope, I graduated last year. Graduated last year, so this is your first year out of high school, and you two together have already done over $460,000 in business this year so far. Well, we've completed about 580. By the time of the year it's said and done, it'll be like six and a quarter, right? Six and a quarter as a brother-sister team fresh out of high school. This is going to be awesome. We're gonna hear all about it coming up now. What are we waiting for? Let's do this thing. All right, guys, in just a minute, we're gonna meet the brother-sister team that built a $620,000 company in just three years. But we're gonna actually walk through step-by-step step exactly how they did this. And as you're listening to this journey of theirs and you are starting to think, uh, you're getting these aha moments, will you share them in the comments down below? I just want any of your thoughts as you're listening to it, what's striking you as important points and what things can you guys share from your own personal journey because there's gonna be a lot of younger people that hopefully will watch this Hopefully we'll get a sense of direction and they'll read through the comments and also go and take the advice that you guys are giving in the comments down below. So please share your wisdom down below. Without wasting more time, let's go meet Garrett and Marlene. Hey guys, when did you start this business? Uh, it was in July of 2017. So you were a junior? Yep, I was, I was actually homeschooled so I finished like later that year. Okay, and you were homeschooled too, right? I was homeschooled too. I was working full time, went to college part time, and worked full time up until March of this year. Now I'm full time with GM. So, is, is being homeschooled was that an advantage or a disadvantage to trying to run a business? Because did your parents give you more time off so that you could pursue this and make this part of your education, or were they stricter and said, "Oh no, 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 you've got to complete all of your." education before you can then go out and play in the dirt yeah they said you know you have to complete complete everything first get all done before you can go full time but i started plowing when i was 13 so i would like try to i would see it's going to snow and then do a little school get it get ahead go out and plow for a day or two and then come back catch back up so i started plowing snow commercial snow plowing when i was 13. how about you i've worked in construction landscape offices since i was 16. i worked part-time when i was 16 at a landscaping company until i was 18 and then worked at a general contractor after that. Okay, so you guys weren't working together mm -hmm. in the beginning, no. were you? No. Well, so. we started out together, yes, but I was still working full time, but while still doing everything with GM too. So, what was the first kinds of jobs that you guys decided to tackle in the very beginning? The first job we did was uh, was a retaining wall. It was actually for my uncle. I was working for a, a local guy, a smaller guy, and then I went I basically quit and went and did that, and then bought a truck and a trailer. And really what got us going was HomeAdvisor. We got on HomeAdvisor right away and work just started flowing in. So 
So in 2017, I worked by myself till the winter. Yeah. Bought a truck, a trailer, bought a plow, saved up enough to, enough to coast through the winter, did some plowing. And then last year was our first full year. We had two guys full time. So was, was Marlena helping you in the beginning? She, she was always helping, but it was just like on the weekends or in the evening when she, when she had time. Yeah, time yep. Yep. handling all the QuickBooks and the accounting and payroll and all that stuff. So I basically just quit my job and just dove into it full force and went for it. And how old were you when you Seven, did that? 17. And how much did you gross that year? The first year was like 40 grand. It was like a couple months for just me. And then last year it was two guys and we did about 260,000. 260,000 last year and then this year, year three, you're over six, how much, 600 and what? We'll probably about 625, said and done. 625, how many guys do you have now? This year, we started with, We started the spring with two guys, right now we have four. Four guys, and I'm looking at, you guys obviously are reinvesting, oh, is it safe to say almost 100% of everything you guys make? Just about, like we- Back into it? Yep, yeah, like for the first, like I didn't even start paying myself until, at anything until like this spring, which was like, what, two years into it. I just worked and like just paid enough to, so get every, by. And every single dime went back into just the right back in, right back take in. anything for ourselves for two years. So both of you were in agreement on that strategy, mm -hmm. right? Yep. And the reason I bring that up to you guys is because I don't think I paid myself a dime for 15 years. Really? I'm not joking. Yeah. I mean, because I came from, like you guys, I had zip, zero, zilch, but I didn't even have somebody to bounce an idea off from. Mm -hmm. And so I was like super struggling for a long, long, long time before I started to hit and click and go wait a minute there is a different way to operate and then that's when things started to really come to fruition for me and so I kind of see you guys following along that same path but on a much faster track so what what has helped you guys like get through those growing pains and get through the struggles uh, it's that been was, really me going full time this year. That, it's been that, that was a huge, huge part because you know so many guys they try to work in the field all day and then go home and work till minute on paperwork. You can only do that so long and you're burnt out and you're tired out. You can't do that. You have to. You got to pace yourself. It's a marathon, not a sprint. A guy's gonna sprint and he's gonna get so far and he's gonna get burnt out. A guy that's pacing himself and so that's basically what I did. I, I, I don't want to go home and do paperwork till midnight. You know, I want to. I basically do the sales and manage the guys this year is what I've been doing. So, so, okay, so can you guys clearly define what the division of labor is inside of your company so these guys watching can go, oh, I get it, now I need to fill this role or fill that role mm -hmm. or what's worked for yeah, you guys? So, so what I've done is I've basically this year is tried to get my hands dirty as little as possible and just focus on sales and then managing the guys. And then we have our, our main guy, Jameson, our brother, and then he manages, he your takes brother. care of all the laborers. Yep. yep. Nice. My he's younger brother, he's, he's 18. Okay. All right, you guys, we've got to, of course, meet the team. Garrett, Marlene, you want to introduce everybody for us? Yep, so this is Brock. He started working for us this spring. Family or no? Nope. Uh, he was a friend of a friend. Okay. Called me up, hey, Garrett, can I have a job? I said, sure, of course. How old are you, Brock? I'm 16. 16? Yep. Okay. And then this is Gage. He worked at a, a, a previous, uh, I used to work with him a few years ago. So once we got going, I called him, hey, Gage, you want a job? He said, absolutely. So he's been with us for two years now. It's the second year. So everything's been going really good. Okay. Good guy to have around. And then this is uh, Jameson. This is our brother. He kind of runs the show when I'm not there. He's 18, did mowing for three years, and then once we got started, he came over and started working for us. So Jameson, he pretty much head up the show while Garrett's on selling? Is that, yeah. is yep. that how yeah. that works? That, without him, I would never be able to just leave this job. Like today, I have two quotes I gotta go do. Or, I mean, I should say never, but while I'm gone, while I'm out estimating, he's taking care of everything here. So on my phone I'm, isn't blown up the whole time I'm gone. So tell me, how did you learn how to run a project? Because this is gonna be you know, you couldn't do this without him, yep. but he needs to know you got to have a person that you can put in there and you didn't just grow up with an excavator. So yeah. how did you know how to start to do this? Uh, this when I did mowing, we did like landscaping and stuff on the, we did a little bit of landscaping, but mostly mowing. And then just mostly he taught me how to do yeah. everything. So the first, like, so. like I said, the first year, last year, I was basically here on the field all day. And then I would work 10 and 12 hours on the site and I would go do quotes in the evening. So like last year I pretty much worked from six in the morning till 10 at night, the whole entire year. I started and doing landscaping and mowing when I was 13. Yeah. And so I've been doing it full time since. So yeah. can I share a strategy with you guys that I just learned from Keith Kalfas, right? Keith is not a systems kind of guy, but he called me up and said, he was telling me about the, his very first system that he really successfully implemented. And I think this is amazing for anybody that's actually interested in it. What he did is he taught his main guy how to do something. So he would show them how to do it. Then he would have them do it while he just watched. And then he would have that main guy grab the next guy in line and teach that guy 
and then he Keith is just watching now he's watching this process this is a whole system where he teaches one guy then that guy has to teach the next guy and then right on down the line and by the by the time his main guy has taught two or three other guys it's in here and he knows that he's confident enough that that guy's got it by that point not just showing him and walking away but showing him and having him share that knowledge no. yeah, awesome. another thing is take care of when you find really good guys you have to do whatever it takes to take care of them you know, give them bonuses, give them raises accordingly, pay them what they can make anywhere else. If you try to just, if you try to always just give them a little, just barely enough, you know, it's, it's give and take. You know, you can't, you can only take, take, take from something or so, someone for so long and then they're gone. So you gotta take care of them, treat them, you know, as you would want to be treated, as, as you would want to be taken, as like, you'd want your employer to treat you and then they'll stick around. And then they'll tell everyone and you'll have people calling you like him, hey, I hear, a guy that worked for us last year, he moved away to a different state, but that's what he heard from. He said, hey, I'll work for Garrett, and it was great, so then that's why he called me. So that's what I, it's nice not to have to go and look for people, for them just to come to you. It's so much easier, so much cheaper. Yep. You, gotta, you gotta create the environment that you would want to be in. At the other places I worked, there was a lot of things. You basically get put with the people you have to be with, and you know, it, it's a lot of, a lot of like bigger like bigger companies, like you're kind of just, you're treated as a number where, yeah, we want to, I want to create the environment that I want to be in. This is the kind of stuff I want to work in. This is the kind of stuff they want to work in. And you know, we just, just take care of them. They need this or that, help them out. And pay, pay them what they're worth, not, you know, what their 10 year old brother's worth. <laughs> you're, you've taken an active role to step away from actually being on the job site. The jobs. I was probably on the site maybe 25, 30% this summer. That's. That's a, I think that's absolutely critical. You have to, if you want to grow and expand, because I, I love doing this. I would run machines all day long, that's what I love doing. But like my like last year, that's what I was, and I realized I'm never gonna get past this. Me and two other guys, I was in a machine all day. We're never gonna get past that. So we basically push off as much, basically push off as much as I can, and I keep going forward. I am smiling from ear to ear because you have literally struck upon the absolute next step that you have to do because one of the things I've said over and over, Garrett, and you know this because Garrett, you and I, we've talked, Marlene, you've, you and I, we've all been together on a number of different events and you guys have heard me that whatever you could pay somebody to run that piece of equipment is what you're paying yourself. And so you're limiting your absolute greatest asset, which is yourself, your mind, your thoughts, your ambition, your drive, your motivation, your hunger to take it to the next step is trapped inside that piece of equipment while you're operating it step away from that and now you freed yourself up you can put somebody else into that position that you trust and that's when you can start to grow exponentially and yeah, you are, this is a good this, thing this is something i learned from you just watching your videos a few years ago is networking is huge like like for instance we were doing a project the other day and we had a little whoopsie we hit a fence yeah. so i i i called up a guy that i know it does fencing and how i got a hold of him i knew what he did where he lived i went knocked on his door said hey rick i'm garrett gnm and we talked and we've been pals since so then we had a whoopsie i call him up he go he's right out there to fix it right away it's like that's a priceless connection so that's what i do I, i'm trying to get trying to get to know every excavator landscaper mowing guy in the area like i see guys out mowing i'll go get to know him get to know the owner all i gotta do is take him out to lunch call him up hey i want to take you out to lunch and then they do mowing and they don't do landscaping, but they know a lot of people and they get a lead, so now they got someone to give them to. So you're, so. you're a living example of cooperation, not competition. Mm -hmm. Yep, I've, I, don't, I don't compete against anyone. Like when I go to bid a project, I just bid it for whatever I need and it is what it is and we get, we've been getting work just left and right. So, and so yeah, it's, networking is huge. You have to, if you, know, if you have every guy in the area in your phone, you're gonna be way above anyone else. And no one else does that nowadays. No one's ever come to one of my sites and said, hey Garrett, I've seen you working, I'd like to meet you. No one's ever called me out of the blue, text me, nothing. No one does it, and it's so easy. Everyone's got a phone, it's, it's the easiest thing ever. <laughs> and that puts you so far ahead. And that was one of the things that when you knocked on my door, what happened after that? Oh, it come right in, you know, and that's the other thing too. I've never went up to someone and wanted to meet them or asked to take them out to lunch, and they were like, no, no, I don't, I'm not interested. No one's ever said that. And I, what I want you guys also to hear is one of the stories, Garrett, that I think was probably the most impactful thing that I, I was actually telling my job foreman today, and that's to leverage the skills and experience of other people inside the industry, but also to use their goals and accomplishments to drive you further. How have you guys used that? Because I know you had a story about the biggest job and, and how you wanted to top that. Yeah, so like when I was watching your videos, so really when I was working for someone else, like I just, I've always wanted to start my own business and then finally the time came and so I was like, I was watching other people's videos and I was like, I see what, like what you were doing and a couple other guys and it's like, I really want to do that. Here's where I want to be, now what do I got to do to get there? Okay, I need this many guys, I need this equipment and so that's basically like set a goal and then do whatever it takes to get there. If you don't know, if you're stuck, call someone, ask someone that's been there, done that 
and just go from there. And then pretty soon you reach that. And then for like a month, I'm looking, okay, well now what do I do? I met, met, I met all my goals from when I first started. So now what do I do? So for like a month, I'm looking around, well now where do I do? Where do I go? Because two years later, I've done everything I wanted to do when I started. Right. And you asked me a very specific question, and I don't, I don't remember how you phrased it. Do you remember what I'm talking? Do you know what I'm talking about? Down at the after the Impact Live event. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So I, one of your videos, you said you made eight grand in a day, and I was like, I want to do that so bad. I want to make eight grand in a day. Well, now this year we've done it. I can't be counting many times. So then I asked, uh, the winner, what's the most? What's the most you have ever made in a day? And you said like twenty-two thousand five hundred. That was so, exactly the amount. So that's that's my next goal. Now our next goal is twenty-two thousand five hundred in one day. So now we have somewhere to go. We're not just wandering around doing whatever. We're setting goals and we're going there. And then boom, boom, boom. There you go. This is, I'm. This is why I just drove an hour just to go out to your site. Let's take a look at this because you're right now you're working on a forty thousand dollar landscaping job, and I want to show you guys what he's got cooking in the backyard. So. Um, and as we walk, guys, can I ask you something? How did you acquire the skills? Because that's that seems to be a big hurdle for a lot of guys is how do I actually do the job? All right, you guys, make sure you come back to part two because what you're going to hear in the next series, well, let me put it this way. I came out to this site expecting to hear an interesting story, but what Garrett and Marlene started to talk about were fundamentally some of the most advanced business principles that I've hardly yet seen anybody put together so succinctly and be able to describe so well. And they're only three years in business, but that's probably why they're also going to bust out over $620,000 this year alone. Make sure you guys come back to part two. Now, we're going to end this one. Part two is coming out right away. We're going to also put this entire video in our Listen While You Work play series. So if you guys are tuning in there, you guys can just, you know, listen to these guys while you're at work. That's why I call it that. And that's all I got for you today, guys. God bless. Go get them. Hit the bell notification. Please subscribe. Please share the video. And one last thing, check out the two videos I'm going to put in the corners for you down here. We will see you on the next one. We'll be back with Garrett and Marlene soon.